I'm so honored to be um, working with this group. I've been working with Ernie and, the, and Paul, the TEDx team, uh, for about two months now. And um, when I was, when Ernie so graciously asked me if I would present, um, after working through the process, I was like, I'm so not worthy of the stage, and I have my whole life's work still ahead of me because I'm at a point now where I have clarity and I know the journey and I know my way. Um, but then after thinking of this and, and some of the people, specifically a teacher and um, step-parents in general, I thought that um, it would be foolish for me to pass on this opportunity for gratitude. So <laughs> that requires a little bit of history. Um, my, my mom and my dad got divorced when I was two years old and I'm the youngest of four girls. And so um, when my, my mother, she was the oldest of seven, and um, so it was her five brothers and a sister, and she grew up during the, during the Depression, so her parents worked, and she was um, basically, basically birthed into motherhood. Um, so when my mom and my dad's marriage dissolved, um, she decided to claim her youth, and it just so happened that I was, um, you know, kind of mixed up in the mix of that. My mother was seeking and trying to find, you know, who she was, and, and um, in that process, her four girls were basically being lost because we bounced around from wherever she had friends and um, just trying to find her way. And I spent a long, I spent a portion of my life upset because I feel like she shortchanged me and she shortchanged my sisters. But ultimately, it was such an amazing gift because she gave me the blessing of perspective, of knowing what it's like to be the new girl or the poor girl. Um, my clothing were, uh, you know, my clothing was always either too small or too big and never cool. <laughs> and um, I learned at a very early age that some people will only see you for what they take in and not for what you really are. And so that helped to shape me. From a very early age, I learned to dig into people and not by what they look like because I know how hurtful that was. So my mom finally decided at a point in her life that she needed to... Um, provide roots for her kids. And that happened to, have, that happened to take place in um, Erie, Pennsylvania. We, we got a place right on the lake, literally right on the lake. And um, my happy pappy is my stepdad. And I wanted to take an opportunity to just um, basically pay homage to step parents everywhere that are really stepping up to the plate and doing amazing things. Because my stepdad, Bob Matthews, really is my happy pappy. And I admire him for what he is. He, for him to step up and say, I'm going to parent four girls and then um, be such an amazing father and a leader, um, he's inspired me. Uh, he works in global water, hence the water. We lived on Lake Erie. And I also think of education as providing a drink. This is my pappy. Um, Mrs. Osterberg, before, well, before I tell you about Mrs. Osterberg, in third grade I had a teacher in Colorado that just didn't like me. I didn't know how to read, and every day she'd hand me my book and push me in front of the class. And I was the only one that had to do this. And I would stand there, sometimes crying, sometimes not, and she was leading the laughter in the class. So then when we moved to Pennsylvania on Lake Erie, the um, Mrs. Osterberg, fourth grade teacher, had me tested to see where I was academically, and it landed me in a class with kids with Down syndrome. And she took it upon herself to say, this girl has potential. And it was through her farm and this reading program that got me to have a zest for education, and she quenched that thirst for me. I um, see compassion in, in learning. That's, that is the greatest gift I think anybody could give someone is to help broaden their horizons. And so, you know, I honestly think that each one of us has that opportunity. The social chicken plays into this because um, we all have a voice and we all have global reach, all of us, through social media. And when I was a child, I was very, very introverted and very scared because of my circumstances, but I've learned to embrace my voice and I've learned the power of social media. And a lot of people don't want to put things up that are controversial, and a lot of people don't want to rock the boat, but ultimately each one of you has a passion and each one of you knows that um, you could probably make a much bigger impact 
And so I, I challenge you to do that. So my mission is to be bold through social media and to, um, I just started my first company, a firm, a consulting firm. And my mission is to first rebrand because I've been branded by a storm. So here's my first attempt, <laughs> the hurricane, my version. My name is actually Katrina, not Christina. Um, but, you know, so I challenge you all not to be social chickens and to use those platforms that are available to all of us to share your voice. Thank you for this time.